Okay, this is dealing with cereal dilution. So oftentimes you're working with a solution that's very concentrated, and so we need to dilute it out. Sometimes it may be a sterile solution, other times it may be where we have a solution that has microorganisms in it, and we want to be able to calculate how many, say, bacteria per milliliter are in that solution. But if we took the original solution, it may be too concentrated for us to be able to count it. So we'll have to dilute it out. When you do a serial dilution, you're taking the original sample and you're going to, in a regular fashion, dilute it out. So as an example here, you have your original test tube here, which would have your bacteria in it. What you would do is, in this case, let's say you take out and remove one milliliter you put it into this tube, which was already prepared that had nine milliliters of your solution in it. So you took one mil, you added it to nine mils. That means that you have now a total dilution factor of one to 10. How did I get a one to 10 dilution factor here? The one stands for the one that you added, and what's the total? One plus nine is 10, so it's a one to 10 dilution. Now, oftentimes what we do is we're not doing one, just one, two. We have to dilute out even further to get to the concentration we want to be. So you would have another tube here, which is nine milliliters, typically of like a nutrient broth. You take one mil out of this solution now, this tube, and transfer over here. Once again, just transfer one milliliter out. That is going to be another one to 10 dilution as compared to this two. To compare what the concentration is here of your original sample to that original tube over here, you simply multiply those together. So this, the total dilution here would be a one, 10 times 10 is 100. So it'd be a one to 100. Why do you have to keep this in mind is because oftentimes what you're doing, like I said, you're trying to figure out how many bacteria are in one milliliter of this original solution. So what do you do here? Well now, oftentimes you're going to remove a sample from here and you're going to plate it. You may be doing a pour plate, you may be doing a spread plate on there. So as you Move this a couple ways we can do this. We're going to look first here. If you take out one milliliter from this test tube and add it to your petri dish, your dilution factor is going to stay the same. In this case, a one to 10. You take one mil out of this tube, add it to the petri dish, the dilution factor stays the same as that original, as compared to the original tubes, that'd be a one to 100. You would incubate the plates as you normally do, and then come back and look uh, the next day or 48 hours later and see the amount of growth. Count the number of colonies. When we count colonies, we have to find this window between 30 and 300 colonies. If there are more than 300 colonies, we do not count that. That is too many, and it would be recorded as too numerous to count, TMTC. If there are less than 30, you record it as TFTC, too few to count. So you have to be between that 30 uh, and 300. So let's say in this plate here, if there were 325 colonies on there, that's too many. Do you count? Just leave it alone. Ignore it. Now over here on this plate, if there are uh, we're let's say 37 colonies. Great, you fell within that range that you're able to count. So how do you figure out what you have here? Okay, you've got 37 colonies. That would transfer uh, to meaning that you have 37 bacteria that were placed on that original plate. Now, because you had added, remember one mil, just like we did over here, that kept that dilution factor the same. So, oh great, you got 37 colonies here. How many bacteria do you have in this original sub, um, tube? Multiply 37 by your dilution factor. So you simply down 37 
times 100, which is going to equal to 3,700 bacteria per milliliter. That's how you would do it. That's pretty straightforward. Now let's change up things a little bit. Right here, if we're going to change and instead, when we took a sample from this tube and went to plate it, let's say that we only took one-tenth of a mil. So 0.1 mil for each one of these. Well, that changes the dilution factor. You're wanting to compare, let's say we have 325 colonies here and we have 37 here still. When you want to figure out how many bacteria per milliliter there are, like I say, you want to look at the dilution factor. However, did you take a full milliliter and put on the plate? No, you did not. You only took a tenth of a mil. So that means essentially, it's like you did right here, another one to 10 to dilution, because you only took one, tenth of a full mil and so essentially on this plate it is really multiply those together a one to a thousand so now once again you would multiply so your answer would be that there are 37,000 bacteria per milliliter it's easiest if you just keep track with each of the dilutions go ahead and write it down and then do the multiplication. And the biggest thing is only read if it's between 30 and 300 colonies. Now, sometimes what we will see, once again, as I erase all of this, depending on what you are working with, you may have your initial sample. And then, pardon me, that I really can't draw well, but here we go. You may, instead of putting in a test tube, may put samples, dilute them into flask. And so in these flask, you would have 99 mils of water. You take, let's say it's a water sample, you're wanting to know how many bacteria are in this water sample that you collected. You take one mil out, in place from the original sample into this flask that has 99 mils in it. Now, you have one mil, so to determine your dilution factor, you have one. You put it in, what's the total volume now? 100. You do the same thing, mix that up, transfer from this first flask to the second flask, you're transferring one milliliter in there. It is another one to a hundred dilution. The total, multiply these two together, so the total dilution factor is one to 10,000. Now, it seems like oftentimes when we do this, we're once again trying to fit within that range of 30 to 300. We're, we're trying to guess where uh, the dilution, how far do we have to dilute things out to hit that range? So oftentimes what you will do is you will take now one mil from here and plate it out. We took one mil Remember, if you take one mil, that's going to keep the dilution factor the same. So that is going to be a one to a hundred dilution factor. Now, out of this flask, you can also take out 0.1 mil. You are diluting again here. That is like a one to 10 dilution. Essentially is what you are doing here. So you would multiply these two together to figure out what this plate dilution factor is. And it would be a one to a thousand. From the second flask over here, 
if you take out one mil, it's going to remain at this dilution, which is a one to 10,000. And then if we take out a tenth of a mil, once again, that is, you're doing another one to 10 dilution here. So on your plate, you multiply the, this one to 10 to the one to 10,000. And you end up with a one to 100,000. Oftentimes we'll do this with water. You don't know where the, the range is going to fall. That's why you're running the test is to find how many bacteria there are per milliliter. So with one plus, you can get two different dilutions on it. So you can get more samples this way. So once again, if you have a lot of growth here, this might be too numerous to count. If, say, you have seven here, you would record that as too few to count. Ignore both of those. This may still be a too numerous to count, depending on where you get your water sample from. And then, let's say here you hit and it has uh, 65 colonies. That's the one that you want. That's the one. You ignore the others. You only look at this one to determine what was the concentration here? You take 65 times, what was the dilution factor? It's 10,000. And so your answer would be, just multiply those together. So it'd be 650,000 bacteria per milliliter. That's high, I wouldn't drink the water. Now, over here, to give you an idea of dilutions and what we are doing, we have these containers that we have set up. This is a 100 mils. As you can see, it's got colored water in it. I have a one milliliter pipette. Both of these containers have roughly 99 mils in them. And so I am going to draw up one mil and transfer it over here. So I'm going one mil into 99. I am making right here a one to 100 dilution. So you can see how by using color water, the idea was to show you how you have diluted it out. Now, if we were to take a mil out of here, and once again on the pipette, you're measuring by the bottom of the meniscus, I'm going up to the zero, and then I'm dispensing it over into this final container. I'll remove this for right now. So this was the original sample. We put one mil into 99. So one mil now has a total of 100 mils. So this was a one to 100 dilution compared to the original sample. Then I took one mil from here, transferred over to this third container. This was a one to 100 as compared to here, or a one to 10,000 as compared to the original sample, because you would go 100 times 100. Hopefully you can see a little bit of a, dis a difference, certainly in the coloration of it. That's the whole purpose of you're diluting it out. So you can get to a number where you can read easily the number of bacteria per milliliter of sample.